Hello and welcome to my labour bag vlog. So today I am going to be sharing what I packed in my labour and birth bag to obviously give you some tips and tricks and bits of advice on maybe what you should bring, maybe what you shouldn't bring. There are a few things on my handy notes here that I didn't actually end up using but um, that's just given you know the circumstances of my delivery and that I would have possibly have liked to have used if I had the opportunity. So the first thing on my list is car seat. Obviously really obvious that that's something that you're going to need in order to bring your baby home but it's something that I kept thinking oh my gosh imagine if we forgot to pack that. So my partner had the base in his car for quite some time so it's just a matter of making sure that the proper insert and the actual seat was in the car as well. Um, another thing was the birth plan. Obviously I had a birth plan or what I like to call a birth guide which I will be sharing a video on at a later time to give you know a bit more detail on what my birth plan or my birth guide was originally. But yeah, I wanted to make sure that I didn't obviously forget my birth plan and my pregnancy notes as well. So all things that if you're in a rush will be quite easy for you to potentially forget. So I actually had all of these things on an Excel spreadsheet. I had them in green on things that were already packed and ready. Uh, and then I had things in yellow that needed to be put in there still. And then in red, it was things that potentially I hadn't gotten yet, which when I did go into labour or when I did go into hospital to get induced, there was nothing in red. So I had everything ready, uh, either in the bag or ready to put in the bag. So yeah, pregnancy notes, obviously. So a water bottle was really important. So I had a lot of friends recommend getting a water bottle that had a straw within it so that you didn't have to tilt your head back when in labour. It might seem really silly and might seem like something that's a really easy thing to do, but when you're in the midst of a contraction, um, you know, the less energy you can use potentially the better. So I had a few friends recommend that to me. So that went straight on my Excel spreadsheet. Pillow. So I'm not really fussy on pillows. I can, t I tend to be able to sleep kind of anywhere. Although during pregnancy, I slept awful. Um, so yeah, I wasn't too precious about that, but I still packed it just because I know that that's something that people have recommended. But yeah, if you are a light sleeper or someone that definitely likes a specific type of pillow, um, I would recommend bringing that along as well. A heat pack, TENS machine. So heat pack would have been great if I had like back pain. I ended up packing it, but I didn't end up needing it. And a TENS machine. So what that is, is it basically, um, you have like little pads and they stick to your back and basically it kind of sends or stops signals of certain pain heading to your brain or just I can't really explain it very well but basically it's meant to help with early labor I unfortunately used it a, like way too late so and we didn't try it before labor so my partner was trying to stick the things on my back when I was like in the midst of contractions and everything and yeah trying to work out what mode to put it on because there was all different like levels and modes and stuff to use and yeah so I'd recommend if you do have a TENS machine definitely trial it beforehand either on your partner or you <laughs> preferably the one if you're pregnant you deserve that so yeah I definitely recommend trialing it before being in labor but yeah for me unfortunately my contractions were too far gone and it just wasn't, you know, wasn't going to help me at all. Uh, I have galaxy light, fairy lights and battery candles. So obviously you can't have fire in a hospital. So yeah, battery candles, fairy lights and a galaxy light that kind of made the ceiling all a bit whimsical. Again, didn't actually use any of these three things. So I thought it would be great to ensure that, you know, I was calm and my environment felt really... Um, yeah just calm and dim lighting and that kind of thing i made sure that the lights were dim as i didn't want you know obviously in hospitals it's like especially like the yellow lighting or the really white lighting so yeah i just made sure that the lights were nice and dim but yeah that would have been great in hindsight but by the time i was in the delivery suite i was just on that gas and air happy to be on the gas and air and yeah didn't um ask my partner to set up the room necessarily like i thought i would 
oil and diffusers, so I was a little bit worried that the hospital was going to smell really clinical, which often they do. So I packed um, a diffuser as well as oils. I think the oil or the smell I had was geranium, as I love geraniums. But again, didn't use that, didn't feel like my environment was really clinical and I didn't feel uncomfortable in the delivery suite. So I feel like that's probably why we didn't kind of put all these little elements into action because at the time I felt comfortable, which obviously is a good thing. Uh, water spray bottle and a flannel. So I more thought water um, spray in case it got really hot or a flannel that my partner would obviously wet, um, rinse out a little bit and then I'd have on my head. I did that. Ha I did have that actually quite a bit in or just on and off in labour when I felt like I was overheating and that, that helped. And it was also served kind of as a distraction as well. So um, yeah, I definitely recommend the flannel. I didn't have a spray bottle. I didn't end up getting that. Headband and bubbles. So again, if you want your hair out of the way or get one of these and tie your hair up. I actually had a hair um, headband on. So yeah, I mean, when I saw pictures, my hair was all a bit, um, as you can imagine. But yeah, that was just good. It kept my hair out of the way, which was great. Phone charger, so a long one. I was recommended to get a long, really, really long phone charger cord because it's not like you have the, usually your plugins uh, to the side of you or the bottom of where you're kind of sleeping. But a lot of the time in hospitals, the um, plugs are high up. So to have a long cord is definitely recommended else, yeah, you won't really be able to charge your phone. What else? I had headphones, a book and Lucozade, so a hydration drink. So in terms of headphones, I had those in when I was in the ward. Didn't have them when I was in the delivery suite. I just had my meditation and my music on out loud. Um, but yeah, for the ward, when I was being induced, I uh, yeah definitely used those more for cancelling out noise because midwives and other patients can be noisy from time to time. So yeah, that was just good to block out the noise. Uh, book, didn't end up reading my book, so yeah don't know if, if you need to bring one to be honest Lucozade or hydration drink so obviously it's really important to keep up your fluids and be hydrated for birth and labor so yeah i had i think i bought like the aldi version of Lucozade sort of thing and that worked a treat and ensure that i was nice and hydrated maternity pads and perennial spray so maternity pads for after labor for the bleeding I'm still using them now and Isla is four weeks on Thursday. So yeah, still needing matern to use maternity pads. So I definitely pack those. Per perennial spray. I didn't actually need to use it, but I was really worried about the first wee, to be honest, as I was told that it was going to be incredibly, um, like sting a lot. But I actually had a drip, so I had loads of water kind of in me, so I wasn't hydrated. So I think that helped ensure that my first wee was um, not painful and I've not had pain like since, which is really good. But I know a lot of women um, do get the either perennial spray for after labor to kind of soothe down there. And then you can get perennial spray like bottles that kind of you fill with water and you squeeze it when you're going for, to the bathroom and then the water dilutes your urine so that when you're weeing, it doesn't sting down there. Um, so I definitely recommend that as well, just for peace of mind as well, because I think it helped me knowing that I had that in case, you know, I did have issues. Breastfeeding friendly clothing. So yeah, loose tops like this, even crop tops that you can pull up. You obviously have your breastfeeding specific clothing. I got a lot of 90s from Sheen that were breastfeeding friendly that you could just pop up as well as dresses and just ensuring that you're comfy. Like it's not a fashion show. Just ensure that you're nice and comfy before labor, during and afterwards as well. Snacks. So I did, I went to Aldi and I did a big shop for like muesli bars and I had raisins, I had croissants. What else did I have? Crisps, chocolate. Yeah, all things like that, just in case myself and my partner were hungry and we did kind of get through those. A towel, so I believe the hospital did provide you with them, um, but I had my own my own towels, so that was fine. 
toiletries, so things like um, toothbrush, toothpaste, hair products, uh, deodorant. I even bought like a body butter just to feel nice <laughs> um, and that just made me feel really fresh both before and after labour. I just put it on my arms and it just made me feel like I kind of spruced myself up a little bit. And then sandals and slippers. So sandals, so shoes that are obviously easy to put on and off. So that's good for walking around the hospital and also for when you're having a shower as well as slippers. Obviously, they're just ultimately really comfy. So I definitely recommend packing those. In terms of clothing, I think I packed like two to three nursing bras, four 90s, like I mentioned before, maternity undies. I even had disposable maternity undies just in case. My, I, I didn't know how bad the bleeding was going to be. Um, breast pads. So I had ones that were fabric that you can put in the washing machine, but I also have the disposable ones and I'm obviously still using them now, breastfeeding. And um, I'd also recommend, yeah, a singlet top maybe for labour. So you don't want anything that's too loose for labour. You want it to be kind of, obviously not tight, tight, um, but I just had a pyjama top that kind of had spaghetti straps and was kind of fitted. Um, I'm sorry if you can hear eyelashes literally in the Moses basket behind the camera <laughs> and yeah so that was good for me and then yeah I had I think like cycle shorts again like maternity slash nursing dresses that were just so easy to just chuck on and um, from Sheen and then things for, for babies so for Isla so I packed wipes nappies muslin cloths body suits vests and sleep suits I thought I was potentially going to go somewhere after giving birth for like aftercare, so a different kind of clinic. So I packed quite a bit for Isla, didn't need it. And I mean, she didn't fit in a lot of the clothes that I <laughs> packed anyway, because she was a lot smaller than what we expected. But that's, um, in a nutshell, that is basically what I packed. Oh, and birthing ball. Not that we took it out of the car. <laughs> they, the hospital ended up having birthing balls that I just used so my partner didn't have to do like another trip to the car. Um, but yeah, I'd also recommend having change just in case the car park, obviously the card machine bit isn't working or if it doesn't take card. Um, and yeah, I think that is everything. So not too long of a video which is good i don't think i've forgotten anything i'm sure i'll watch this again and be like oh you've got to add this but i did actually go off my excel spreadsheet and put it in this book just in the hopes that i wouldn't forget anything but yeah if anyone wants my excel spreadsheet that i do have i'm more than happy to send it over maybe just um, send me a comment and i can maybe just get in contact with you separately and send it via email um so if maybe you want to contact me on Instagram that might be best in messenger and then we can go from there and I can send you over the excel spreadsheet and I can do the same for my birth vlog I'm going to do on my birth plan or guide I should say but yeah as I said I'm going to do a birth vlog about that in another video but I hope that's helpful and yeah like I said I can send over the excel spreadsheet for anyone who wants it okay bye <laughs>